Well, the Princess of Wales is currently in hospital after undergoing planned abdominal surgery. And King Charles will go to hospital next week for treatment for an enlarged prostate. For the latest, let's bring in the Daily Mirror royal editor, Russell Myers, live in London. Russell, thanks for your time. Look, what do we know of Princess Kate's health condition? Well, good evening, Shari. Well, that sort of information was dripping out yesterday. A bombshell statement, first of all, from Kensington Palace and then followed, as you rightly said, by uh, another one from Buckingham Palace about the king and his prostate exam next week. But first of all, Princess Kate is in hospital where she'll stay for the next 10 to 14 days. And uh, we're told it was planned abdominal surgery. She will ha have a three month recovery, which does seem like an awful long period of time. She's cancelled engagements. Uh, everything has been sort of wiped off the slate for the next few weeks and months. No foreign tours, uh, especially for her and for William for the uh, for the current period. But mm. uh, I'm, I'm told she's doing OK at the moment. So, uh, you know, sending her our best wishes. Yeah, and I'm sure more details will emerge at some point in the next few days. Now, just days into his reign, the Danish monarch King Frederick has released an unexpected autobiography and it praises his Australian wife, Queen Mary, this after rumours have been swirling of an extramarital affair. What can you tell us about this new book? Well, very interesting, you know, the, the, the abdication of Queen Margrethe, who came completely out of the blue on New Year's Eve during her address to the nation. I don't think anybody was expecting it, but her stepping down after 52 years on the throne. And, and uh, certainly eyebrows raised at the timing of it, because there had been these rumours circulating over the past few months of an affair that uh, the Crown Prince Frederick, as he was then, was uh, engaged with, with a Mexican socialite, Genevieve Casanova. But this new book, is sort of celebrating his sort of new uh, found, uh, I suppose, stardom. He's now in the top job with Queen Mary by his side. Certainly he is sort of riding on the crest of a wave of her popularity because uh, she has been absolutely endeared from the, uh, mm. from the Danish public's point of view. They've absolutely adored her. The fact that she's ingratiated herself with the population, learned the language, accepted um, you know, the, the royal duties and all the charitable endeavours that have been thrown at her. And I think that uh, the, the book is sort of an ode to her and the fact that she's, um, she's willing to take this sort of leap of faith with him. And, uh, and you know, look at their popularity stain things at the moment. It's about 80, 90 per cent. So mm. well, I think um, they, they must be doing something right. Yeah, I guess people don't hold it against him that he's been off gallivanting with Ms Casanova. Now, very quickly before you go, I want to turn to these revelations in yet another book that the late Queen Elizabeth was furious that Harry and Meghan named their daughter after her. Do you think this rings true? Well, it's interesting. I mean, Harry and Meghan choosing to name uh, their daughter Lilibet, it caused a bit of a stir at the time and it's causing a bit of a stir now. I mean, Harry and Meghan can't really do anything right uh, uh, by over the other side of the pond at the best of times. So one may feel sorry for them at some instances. And I think that, uh, you know, if you're getting het up about a baby name, that uh, something's gone wrong in your life, I, I think. I don't think the Queen would have been that angry about it at the time. So possibly a bit of, uh, you know, sticks and stones. But, um, yeah. you know, one, one sure for the book. I'm sure you'd be happy that your name lives on. Russell Miles, Precisely. thank you very much for your time.